Okie dokie. So, uh, one question I get a lot, actually. I've been getting it for a while, and I've still never done a video on it, so now's the time. Um, one question I get a lot is, how do you insert, like, special characters in Vim? Because uh, that's something I need to do a lot, um, and it's sometimes, you know, people who know different languages or just need to write things that, you know, have different characters for some reason, they might need, they often need to be able to insert characters that just aren't on the, on the keyboard. Now, I do this really easily in Vim. I have sort of, it's not a script, but a little uh, Vim file that does this uh, for me, and it makes it very, very easy. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, anyway, so actually, for those of you who have subscribed to the channel for any significant period know that my day job actually has nothing to do with tech. I'm actually a graduate student in linguistics, and here you see uh, the International Phonetic Alphabet, which has a bunch of crazy characters on it. Um, these are, I have to use these characters basically every day, uh, so I need to be able to insert them in documents and stuff like that. Now, there are some people uh, who waste a whole bunch of time using Microsoft Word's select character thing or copying pasting them or something like that, and that's all silly. I'm going to show you how to do it in Vim very, very easily. Um, uh, and additionally, even if you're not using crazy characters, uh, you know, there oftentimes you have uh, lots of diacritics, so like accent marks, you know, macro the lines above or you know dots below or something like that here's an example document I wrote and I wrote it in Vim uh, with a bunch of different characters um, uh, and the anyway let's get into how how I actually do this um, so I'll show you how my setup sort of works um, but before I show you that I should say there is I don't use this but there is in Vim a default function for inserting some characters now it doesn't have everything but and I actually don't know that much about it like I just because I don't like the ergonomics of it but I'll show you how it works um, and that is the control K uh, shortcut now whenever you type control K uh, I just type control K and you'll see that my cursor is now a question mark. Now, after you type that, the next two characters you type will determine what character it inserts. Now, I don't know many of these because I don't use it, but uh, if I type AE, it'll give me the, you know, AE ligature uh, character, or I assume the same is true of OE or something like that. Um, now, there are a bunch of weird combinations. I, I can just, okay, that one's Japanese. I didn't expect that. Um, but there are a bunch of random combinations you can play around with. You can look them up. Um, I'll just say, I don't like this just because it involves pressing, like, especially when you're writing a language that has a bunch of these characters, it's just sort of a pain to have to type control K. Control is just always a pain to, to touch. One of the reasons I don't use Emac, Emacs. Um, but anyway, let me show you my setup. Uh, I'm not going to show you the script that does it immediately. I'm just going to show you how it works. Um, I have two things going for me. One is a way of inserting these IPA characters, and one is for putting diacritics on uh, vowels or consonants or whatever. Let's talk about the diacritics first. Um, I have a, a little function that creates dead keys. Now, normally, you know, if I type, uh, if I type uh, characters, they pretty much come out how I type them. Now, I have a shortcut mapped. Let me turn my... Yeah, uh, I have a shortcut map to space space D, and that turns on dead keys. And what that means is when I type quotation mark and then A, that actually produces an A with a, um, you know, acute accent. Or, you know, a grave accent is, you know, if you I put the, the falling accent beforehand. Or I can have a, a macron, or, you know, a dot under a character, or something like that, or a tilde, uh, you know, lots of different stuff. Um, I actually forget all the stuff that I, I put in here, but uh, you know, all most all of the diacritics I need I have with this dead keys function. Now, a lot of times this can be a pain because if I'm writing, you know, something in quotation marks, the dead keys can get in the way because they'll form characters I don't want them to form. So I have a nice way of turning them off. If I just press the same shortcut, space space D, it turns them off. And now, you know, I'm back to normal. So sometimes when I'm writing in a language that needs these characters, I'll, I'll jump back and forth. And it's again, it's just space space D. Uh, I don't have to leave the home row, basically. Now, writing IPA characters, I'll go ahead and I'll show you the script that does this. Of course, this is not, if you're typing this in on Vim, it's not going to work. Yeah, I'll show you how to make this work in a second. Um, I, but I'll, I have the same thing for IPA characters. If I press space space I, that activates IPA character uh, shortcuts. So I'll... So, for example, if I want, um, you know, uh, this symbol, uh, which is the symbol for the ng sound, ng sound, uh, I type semicolon ng, and that, that comes up. 
Or if I want uh, the bilabial trill, which is like blah, which some languages actually do have, it is BB or something like, so it's semicolon BB. Um, so I basically just have a bunch of mnemonics. Like the, if you don't know the, the symbols in the IPA, that might be a little arcane, but a bunch of mnemonics for all the different sounds that you know I need to, to type at a daily basis. Um, and um, well, anyway, let me show you how, how these scripts work. Oh, I should say, and to turn these off, you can press space space I, so you can easily toggle them off and on. Uh, anyway, let me show you how these work. Um, and there are two parts. They are individual scripts, and you have to call them in the vimrc, or you, well, you could just put them directly in your vimrc, but let me show you the scripts first. I just put them in my vim folder. Um, so basically how they work is, so for the IPA script right here, and the other one basically looks exactly the same, uh, but for the IPA script to make this, I basically just copy and I just went to Wikipedia, highlighted all of the IPA characters and pasted them in here. And of course, using a nice Vim macro, I put them all on an individual line or something like that. Now I took only the ones that I need daily uh, and I created a mapping for each one of them. So this function, when I call this function IPA, it maps all of these sequences. So it maps ng to that character we saw before, okay? Um, now, that function maps them, and there's another function that unmaps all of those macros. Um, and the function up here, this thing toggle IPA, that, that just basically turns them off if they're on or on if they're off. Now, I call that in my vimrc in the following way. Let me scroll down the, to this. Uh, I source the file wherever it is. It happens to be in vim luke IPA. And then I map um, in both normal mo mode and insert mode different uh, commands that call the toggle IPA command. So that, that's basically how it works. So whenever I press that keyboard shortcut, it runs this function that either maps or unmaps the characters. Uh, and I'll show you the other one as well, uh, the dead keys one, which is pretty much the same stuff. Uh, dead keys, uh, uh, dead keys. Um, and in this one, it's basically the same thing. I have all the different like accented characters uh, and what maps to them. I have them all nice and grouped up. You know, grave accents, umlauts, macrons, the uh, dots underneath, uh, tildes, stuff like that, hot chicks, um, or Karen. Is that, I, I always I think those are both acceptable terms for that. But whatever. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, if you want these files, they're in the video description to a link, you know, it's a link it to my GitHub or whatever, but that's how I do it. Um, and of course you can take, uh, if you need to use IPA characters or if you need to use the, um, you know, dead keys, uh, you can of course just borrow these bindings, put them in separate files, call them in your vimrc or put them directly in your vimrc if you want. I would put them in my vimrc, but my vimrc and it's already like 200 something lines. It's way too long. Uh, it's just aesthetically, I don't like long files. Uh, but that's uh, but that's basically it. Uh, so that that's how I do it. And like in practice, like I don't really have to think about it. I'm just writing. I never have to. Uh, like the mnemonics are very nice. Like I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I just pretty much type in it. You know, it just works. Um, so that's about it, uh, and I, I will say just to be totally clear, if you don't want, the reason I have these as functions that to, you know, toggling them off and on is just because I want that ability. If you want to always map some particular character to something, you can, you know, let's say you always want, you know, uh, you, quotation mark A to map to a with an uh, acute accent on it. If you want that, you can just put that in your vimrc just alone, and that's going to be that. Um, the only reason I have all this function stuff is I want to be able to turn them off. But if there's a binding that you always want, obviously, you can just have it in your vimrc. So that's about it. Again, check the video description for the files, and I uh, hope you learned something or hope you have some ideas, and see you guys next time.